What is going on guys? Today I've brought you to my beautiful city of Seattle with my nephew William and we are bringing you the second part of my time-lapse tutorial coming up right after this. What is up everybody? In my previous video I showed you how to download and install a free alternative to the Sony Play Memories time-lapse app. In this video I will put that app to use and show you how to export your time-lapse using both paid software and some free alternatives. Alright guys, some important tips to go over before we start our time-lapse. The first thing I always do is stick my camera into manual mode. I'm going to manually set my shutter speed and my aperture. The important thing to remember is, is we don't want the camera making any adjustments during the time-lapse. If we do allow the camera to do that, it's going to introduce flicker into the shot and we do not want that. I'm going to go ahead and set my f-stop to 16 and my shutter speed down to 1 20th and my ISO set in at 100. Also, if you hit the function button, I'm going to set a custom white balance to cloudy and you're going to want to make sure that your camera is set for manual focus. Anything that can adjust the exposure or the color temperature on the fly will introduce instances of flicker into the shot. Another important thing to keep in mind is you're going to want a fully charged battery. Once you have all of your settings dialed in, go ahead and hit the menu button on the back of the camera and select your application list and select the time lapse app that we've installed in the previous video. Here we're going to set our interval and the number of shots that we're going to take. So today I'm going to set my interval at one second the number of shots at 400 and that's going to give me a six minute time lapse time and the resulting file is going to be 16 seconds long and I'm going to hit start. All right, so we're back here in the studio after finishing the time lapse. The first thing that I've gone ahead and done is imported all of the pictures into a file folder. Now the tutorial going on from here is going to assume that you have both Lightroom and Adobe Premiere. If you do not, I do have a free alternative solution at the end of this video that I will go ahead and show you. It's definitely not as feature rich, but it will get the job done in a pinch. So go ahead and open up Lightroom and hit the import button. And point Lightroom to the folder that you've imported your files to. Alternately, you could pull the files straight off of the SD card, but I find that is a pretty slow process. So I'm just going to do it from the file folder. Hit Import. After all of the pictures have imported into Lightroom, go ahead and head over to the Develop module. Make sure the number one picture is selected down here. Go ahead and make your adjustments how you see fit. Come back down here and hit Control A to select all. Go ahead and hit the sync button over here to synchronize all of your settings that you've changed. This will go across all 400 pictures that I've done and hit synchronize. I've already done this so I'm going to hit cancel. After you're all done, if all of the slides are still selected, come up here to file and hit export. Choose your folder and hit select folder. Now hit the export button. Once the files have exported from Lightroom, go ahead and open up Adobe Premiere. I'm using Premiere Pro CC 2019. Go ahead and click New Project. Go ahead and name your project. And hit OK. Once here, click File and head down to Import and you're going to point this to where your exported folder is and hit open. Now it's very important you're only going to select one of your images here. You're going to want to make sure that you're selecting the very number one image in the sequence and make sure this little checkbox image sequence is checked and click open. Adobe Premiere has now loaded all 400 of my images into one file here. So we're going to go ahead and drag this down to the timeline. 
Now I shot these pictures with an A6000 at 24 megapixel. The resulting resolution was a 6000 by 4000 file. Now in camera, you have the ability to actually shoot in 16 by 9, which is the target aspect ratio that I'm going for in my project. But by shooting in full res, you're actually able to have a lot more latitude in terms of how you're going to uh, frame the shot. So go ahead and hit the sequence button across the top here and click sequence settings. Now you'll notice it says 6000 by 4000. So we're going to change this to 1920 by 1080. I'm leaving mine at 24 frames per second and I'm going to click OK. Changes to preview file format or the preview frame size require all preview files to be deleted. Click OK. Now you notice we're way zoomed in here. So what we need to do is we need to go to Effects. Make sure that you have Effect Control selected on the left. Now over here you'll notice that you have Position and Scale. So Scale is at 100. So if we dial this back a little bit, you'll notice that we are filling the frame out and you'll notice black bars appearing on the left and the right. Now these black bars will appear on your television if you left it like this. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here. Alternately, if you double click on it, it will actually allow you to drag it around, which I find to be a little better. So I'm going to zoom in a little more on mine and get this framing just exactly how I want it. At this point, you could add music down here or a voiceover or some titles. I'm going to leave this one just blank for now. So to export this, go ahead and hit File, Export, and select Media. I'm going to leave my format at H.264, but this little drop down here gives you a ton of options. Down here is the preset. So you've got uh, match source, high quality, settings for Twitter, Vimeo, YouTube. I'm going to be exporting this to YouTube. So I'm actually going to click the YouTube 1080p Full HD. And our basic video settings are here. So we've got 1920 by 1080. Right here you've got your output name. Go ahead and click this. Name your file, whatever you would like. And hit save. And go ahead and hit export. Now the export time is going to vary depending on the power of your machine, how long your time lapse is, what effects you have used, so on and so forth. All right, so the encoding has finished. I want to mention, I'm going to be making a video in, in the future that will delve deeper into these settings. You can actually add all sorts of different effects, uh, including um, position and motion in the picture. Alright, so we've completed this using paid software, but say you're on a very tight budget and you don't have the money for Adobe products. There's a couple of different options. They're pretty crude, but they work, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Now, one of the options is you can actually use Microsoft Movie Maker, and I'm not talking about the latest one that they've included in Windows 10, but the unsupported version that you can still download. So if you don't have Movie Maker, I will include a link in the description below, but go ahead and open it up. So once Movie Maker is open, we actually have to do some trickery here to make this do a time lapse. But go ahead and start by clicking Add Videos and Photos. And click on the folder where you have your photos. Make sure to select the number one photo and then hit Control A to select all and hit Open. Once the pictures have loaded up, click on the Project tab across the top. And make sure to select widescreen instead of 4x3. From here, you're going to head over to the Edit tab across the top. This is where we have to trick Movie Maker into making a time lapse. 
So you'll notice in the duration box here, it's defaulted as being seven seconds. You can select anything from one second all the way up to 30 seconds, but it actually will allow you to enter a custom value here. The lowest value being 0 0.03, which will enable us to have a 30 frame per second time lapse. Once this is completed, go ahead and hit home. And over here, click save movie. I am going to select 1080 for high definition display, but you have a bunch of options down here. So select which one you see fit. Select a name. And you're going to hit save. Now it's going to take several minutes depending on how big your movie file is here. Now, if you don't want to use Movie Maker, there is a third option, and that's Virtual Dub. I will include a link in the description below on where you can download this. But go ahead and download the zip file and unzip it where you see fit. And open it up, and you're going to click on this VDub64.exe. Once Virtual Dub is open, click View, Pane Layout. Make sure both panes are selected and make sure that you have auto size panes check marked right here. Go ahead and hit file and click open video file. Now just like in Adobe Premiere, we're only going to select the number one photo and hit open. Now the window pane on the left here is the input file and this will be our final output file. They're the exact same right now because we haven't changed anything. So just like in Adobe Premiere, these are a four by three aspect ratio and we need to change them to 16 by nine. How we do that in this program is click Video, click Filters, click Add, and scroll down to where you see Resize, and click OK. On New Size, click Absolute Pixels. You'll notice it's defaulted as 6,000 by 4,000. Now we're going to put 1920, but it's going to automatically select 1280 for us, but we're going to deal with that down here. So click on crop to aspect ratio and change it from four by three to 16 by nine and click OK. Now click OK. Now you notice this is our first file and our resulting file is a bit more cropped in. So once you're finished here, go ahead and hit file and select save as AVI. Go ahead and name your file. Select which folder you would like to save it in and click Save. And again, it's going to depend on the size of your project, how long this is going to take, and the speed of your machine. All right, guys, well, there you have it. If you found this video useful, please do not hesitate to hit that thumbs up button. And if you like this video, please do not hesitate to subscribe.